Hello students. We know biomolecules are the very much the essential components of our body for all living organisms. Life has no existence without biomolecules. Proteins is one of the biomolecule which is very much essential for the growth and development of the living bodies. It is also essential for the body resistance, it also control the disease. So, it is the important composition of all living that means we can say for animals, the almost uh, maximum part that contains proteins is the main composition. So today we will discuss the what are proteins, what are the types of proteins, what are the composition of protein, what are the structure of protein, what are the biological significance of proteins, we will discuss. And this is also very much essential for the uh, fundamental knowledge um, regarding the biomolecules, the different composition and the uses. So proteins, we can say, these are the called polypeptides. These are called polypeptides. Polypeptides of amine, alpha amino acids. Polypeptides of alpha amino acids are called proteins. Then let us part, let us discuss the what are alpha amino acids. Alpha amino acids, if you see the structure, this is your amino group and this is the I, that the next carbon, alpha carbon, this is your R and this is your acid. So this is acid group, this is called alpha carbon. So alpha amino acid is called Alpha position containing amino group having carboxyl group is called what? Alpha amino acids, which is the important essential of proteins. But some amino acids may contain more than one carboxyl group, it may contain more than amino groups. So, like this, it depends upon the structure. So, the first member, the first member of Amino acids, we can say this is the first member of amino acids having that uh, only H atoms, that's why it is the first member, primary structure that we can say preliminary structure of the amino acids, simplest form of amino acids. This is called glycine. This is called glycine, which is the first member of amino acids and it is optically inactive because it has no chiral centers. So it is optically inactive which one? Glycines. But except glycine all amino acids, alpha amino acids are optically active. That's why we can say the proteins are also optically active. So these amino acids when you combine how the peptide bond is formed let us discuss when This are uh, one amino acid combined with ami another amino acid like this. So what happens when they combine? It produces loss of what water molecule. Loss of water molecules minus water will be release from this then forming here NH if you do the structure this is NH2 
then CX, then R, then CO, NH, CH, R, CO. So this part, this part is called peptide bond. This is called peptide bond. So every proteins contains peptide bonds. So number of peptide bonds are formed when n number of when n number of amino acids combine, forming polypeptides. These polypeptides are generally called amino acids. But if you see the structure of amino acids, amino acids exist in you to see. This is the normal structure of amino acids. Amino acids can exist in Jupiter and one. Suppose it loses H plus H is carboxyl group, this is your amino group. Amino group is basic character having lone pair and this is having H plus and so acidic character. One group is acidic, another group is but basic. So it exists in Jupiter ion forms, it is like this. Minus. This is called Zwitter ion. Zwitter ion of amino acids. And this Zwitter ions of amino acids, if this form, when you add acid, so this Zwitter ion, when it is H plus is added to this Zwitter ions, it exists in this form N S D plus then C H R C O H completely it will be cationic form. This is cationic form. But when treated with T that uh, you can say which minus ion then it will produce N S two C H R C O O minus. This is anion form. Anion form. So cation form, anion form, and this cation move towards what? Cation move towards cathode. It move towards cathode. It will move towards anode. That means when you add H plus ion, it will move towards cathode. When you add OH minus, it will move towards the solution of amino acids, move towards anode because it has a negative charge, it will move towards anode. But the, at particular pH, at particular pH, at in a specific, specific pH. When amino acids does not move towards any electrode, when it does not move towards any electrode at the particular pH, it is called called. Isoelectric point. Isoelectric point. What is isoelectric point? The at particular case, amino acid does not move towards any electrode. That is called isoelectric point. And it varies from amino acid to amino acid, depends upon the that uh, pH value. So this is the structure of amino acids. Regarding this, then let us discuss the structure of uh, protein. Structure of protein. Structure of protein. Protein structure. Structure of protein on the basis of. On the basis of 
Shape. Shape of B. Reflection. On the basis of the shape of the peptide chain, proteins generally two types. One is that is fibrous protein. Another one is globular protein. Globular protein. Generally two types. Hydrous protein and globular protein. Okay. Generally two types of protein: fibrous protein and globular protein. Fibrous protein that is thread-like structure, thread-like structure, and uh, like this thread-like structure, and the peptide chains run parallel one another and held together by hydrogen bonding. The chains are drawn parallel to each other, parallel to each other, and held by hydrogen bonding. And it is water insoluble. This fibrous protein water insoluble. That is keratin, hair, nail, then your myosin muscles. That is mainly contain these fibrous proteins. And globular proteins. It is the special type of protein. And the peptide chains attain spherical shape. Round cell. If you see the blood, uh, the cell in microscope, you will see the blood cells and just just like spherical cell. Spherical cell of molecule attain and peptide chains coil one another, forming coil. And that is elastic nature. This globular protein elastic nature and held by hydrogen bonding. These chains are held together by hydrogen bonding and it is water soluble. And this is your hemoglobin, albumin. Then insulin. These are the three examples of you know insulin, which helps for the uh, what secretion of it, 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 it secretes from the pancreas and helps for the digestion of metabolic uh, activity of that is glucose. It can maintain glucose level. Hemoglobin is very important in the blood present. Albumin that is egg contain albumin protein. So these are the some globular proteins. These are fibrous protein. So this type of protein, this type of classification, on the basis of shape of the peptide chain. Then we will discuss another two types of important two types of protein that is the classification of proteins on the basis of this is one on the basis of structure on the. Basis of structure, then proteins generally that uh, three four types of protein on the basis of structure. That is primary structure, secondary structure, that is tertiary structure. Fourth one is fourth one is quaternary structure. So. Four types of protein: primary proteins, secondary proteins, tertiary protein, and quaternary protein. Means on the basis of structure. Primary protein indicates mainly that uh, what it indicates the only peptide chains of amino acids. This is your you can say this is your primary structure. This is example of primary structures and secondary structures. Secondary structure, it the it is the coil set, the folding of the polypeptide chain. So we can say like this. This is your secondary structures. Means the peptide chains again coil one another due to hydrogen bonding. This is the hydrogen bonding. If you see the structure, the coil due to attraction of the peptide bond with another peptide bond due to peptide bond having an NH group and CO group. That one NH group attracts to another one peptide bond attracts another peptide bond by hydrogen bond. This is called that result secondary structure that is the folding the coil set. And tertiary structure what happens? One folded chain again uh, compact with another folded chain. That means 
You don't really see like this. So this is your torsier structure. That means the one folded chain again compact with another folded chain. This is your torsier structure. And quaternary structure, you can say this is a complicated structure, complicated structure like this. That is uh, composite structure of all three. That means primary, second, and tertiary all will be in composite form. This is called quaternary structure. This is quaternary structure. Almost it exists in quaternary forms. And primary structure simply the composition of amino acid. How the amino acid join one another, forming linear structure of the peptide chain. Primary, secondary results folded, folding of the chain, and the two folded chain again um, just uh, compact one another that is tertiary, then quaternary. So, on the basis of this, on the basis of structure, that protein also exists in primary form, secondary form, tertiary form, and quaternary form. And this primary structure, secondary structure, this secondary structure. Secondary structure generally two types. One is uh, that we can say that uh, alpha helix, alpha helix structure. Another is we can say beta plated, beta plated structure. This alpha, this secondary, both are secondary. Secondary alpha helix and your secondary beta plated structure. This is the two types of secondary structure. Here what happens, the secondary this structure exists in alpha helical form or beta plated form. In alpha helical structure, in alpha helix what happens, the, the the chain, peptide chain, twisted into helical form. And just like your right hand rules, or you have read the right, flaming right hand rules like this, it will be coiled in the particular direction. And for due to this, this, this coil form due to exist due to hydrogen bonding. This is called alpha helix form. And the beta plated form, what happens? The peptide chain stretched out in maximum extent. Then this closed chain come closer and by hydrogen bonding it is aligned and led side by side or just oriented in side by side and exist in beta plated form and this is called beta plated structure a parallel or anti-parallel form they will be arranged your n end your c o n n end c o n like this it will be arranged. one end you see like this parallel, anti-parallel, parallel, anti parallel, anti parallel form, they will be arranged. And this is called beta plated structure, and this is called alpha helix structure. Both cases folding. Secondary structure means folding of the chain. Here also folding, here also folding. So this is about alpha helix or beta plated structure of the proteins. So on the basis of structure, that is primary, secondary, and tertiary and quaternary, on the basis of shape of the peptide chain is fibrous protein or globular protein. Next, then what is denaturation of protein? Natural protein is called native protein. Natural protein is called native protein. It is called native protein which has specific uh, physical properties. It possesses the specific characteristics that is native protein. But when the native protein will be subjected to when native protein is subjected to uh, addition of acids or base or heat, anything you can do. When native protein is subject to addition of acid, base or heat, then 
it's luges luges the normal behavior that means it loses the physical behavior this property this characteristic of protein is called denaturation that means the physical property lost due to the what addition of acid base and heat that is called your denaturation for example you can take the example that the normal egg to boiled egg boiled egg this is called denaturation here the that structure of protein changes and the physical behavior also changes so this is called normal egg to boiled egg and this 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 uh, denaturation mainly results it results it results in the primary structure it results in the change in the change of primary structure change in the primary structures okay it results in the change of primary structure is very important denaturation mainly sorry 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 changes it results in the change in change of secondary that is your change of secondary tertiary and quaternary structure of protein primary structure remains intact without loss of primary structure only change in secondary tertiary and quaternary structure change observed in case of denaturation the primary structure because primary structure only result due to the peptide bond formation between alpha and beta so peptide bond will not disturb only the secondary tertiary and quaternary structure of what protein changes in the maturation this is very important example of the one physical behavior of the protein then what are the application biological application biological application in biological application already know first protein acts as antibodies that antibodies develop in the protein which protect the uh from disease that's why this is only due to the formation of antibodies by the protein protein helps the formation of antibodies then acts as enzyme enzyme almost all that uh, enzyme also it is a protein structure that example already know hemoglobin insulin insulin these are the what insulin hemoglobin these are the examples of enzyme which helps in the biological biological change biochemical reaction mainly takes place due to the help of this enzyme then another importance importance of this protein is that uh, main role main role in body structure structure and growth and the structure growth and development development growth and structure mainly due to proteins so these are the very important what biological significance of protein today we will discuss regarding the what are the proteins what are the structure of protein the types of structure of protein and the denaturation of proteins okay in the next class we will discuss regarding the uh, that nucleic acids and its classification and its biological significance okay thank you